Praise the, the Lord. God. Yes. And let Thank us God. sing. Can you extend your hands towards me? Yes, and let God. us sing uh, Spirit of the Living God and uh, uh, Wonder Woman, Jen, Jenny. Will, gotcha. Yeah, it's, uh, they will, can you extend, extend your hands towards me? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, Wonder Woman Jenny. So my uh, uh, teaching, the title of my teaching uh, is Obstacles to the Healing Ministry. And uh, Jerry will uh, put it on screen, Obstacles to the Healing Ministry. Obstacles to the Healing Ministry, and there are many obstacles, sad to say. And uh, by the way, by the way, before we, we go on with these teachings, I just want to remind you or share with you that we had a meeting last week, uh, the, the Parish National Service of Communion is a national conference and carries in, uh, there's an international, this is, there is a Caris International Service of Communion, which was created by Pope Francis himself. And then we also have national, uh, Caris National Service Communion of the United States. Now we have the national uh, convention last, uh, over a week ago, and uh, you might ask me, Bob, what is a Caris National Service of Communion is an organization which represents all the uh, Catholic Charismatic Renewal uh, groups and leaderships and organizations and prayer groups, prayer communities, uh, different ministries, and mostly leaders that attended the national convention. And on Tuesday, last, last Tuesday, last week, and we had a, a guest speaker, Bishop Cummins from, uh, is he's an auxiliary bishop uh, from Minneapolis, St. Paul. And he said that the, all the, the US Catholic bishops of the United States, USCCB, uh, the, the US Catholic bishops have a six year initiative 
And uh, the initiative is called Revival of the Eucharist. And he said that he wanted to talk to us in the renewal because he said that the bishops are going to anchor this initiative, yes, through the Eucharist. The Eucharist, according to the Catholic, uh, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is the Eucharist is the summit of our Christian life. Is our the summit of our Christian life, you know? So uh, he said that. This, this revival of the Eucharist is anchored on healing. So all the archdioceses, all the, the dioceses, the parishes in the United States are going to be encouraged to conduct mass and healing service because this initiative is anchored on healing because what the bishop says, say that, um, the healing, healing is a, a tool for evangelization. This is one of the most effective tools for evangelization. So they are going to encourage all the archdioceses, parishes, all the dioceses. Why does it smell like Florida today? Like Pardon? Hello? I told you not to Hello, Jenny? Do not fight in front of the, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that uh, this is an initiative that uh, will be anchored on healing. So the healing ministry is very important because it is one of the best tools for evangelization. When uh, people, you know, I have experiences that when people witness many healings, like people came out from the wheelchairs, uh, paralytic people who, who are able to walk, blind people able to see, the deaf able to hear, uh, people who are oppressed by spirits, they are delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit, then people will tend to, will tend to have their faith increase because of the fact that they have witnessed healing, they have experiences, they have experienced healings. As a result, they become brand new inside. They have their faith in the Lord's power to heal will increase or has increased many times. So healing is very important. It's a very important uh, ministry in the church today not only today, but in, uh, even during the time of Jesus. So, however, there are obstacles to the healing ministry that needs to be dealt with. So let us talk about these, these obstacles in order to avoid them, okay? So I encourage everybody, everybody, is encouraged to pray with people, okay? You might say, Bob, I'm, I don't know how to pray. I don't know the techniques. I don't know, you know, I'm not uh, in the healing ministry, but yes, you may not be in the healing ministry, but you can pray for healing for anybody at any time that is necessary. Everybody is, is given or has been given by the Lord uh, a mission to, to preach, to teach, and to heal in his name. As a matter of fact, he called his 72 other disciples. He said, go and preach the good news, heal the sick, cast out demons, preach the gospel in my name. So we are the disciples of Jesus. So we are, we are supposed to exercise the power in Jesus name to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to make the blind see, the deaf hear and the lame walk. Okay, so 
let us uh, note some of these obstacles though. There are some obstacles. Uh, general unbelief in the power of the healing prayer. Many people don't believe that they will be used by the Lord to heal. Or many people even don't believe that healing, divine healing exists today. They said it might be true in during the time of Jesus, but but it's no longer true today. That I that is nothing is more farther than the truth than that statement because healing is still going on until now because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. The same Jesus who raised the dead to life, who healed the blind, the lame, mm -hmm. the mute, the leprous. Amen. It's the same Jesus that is healing until now. Amen. He never changes. In, in, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 8, we read that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we should, you know, we should ask the Lord, Lord, give me the grace to believe that the healing power is still real. It, it's real that I can be used for healing. It's true maybe that there are people who are called to, to pray for the sick. Uh, there are people who are gifted in, in healings. There are, there are people that when they pray for the sick, they, the, the sick really gets healed. But it doesn't preclude us from praying for the sick. It doesn't exempt us from praying for the sick because we have given the mission to preach, to teach, and to heal. And number two, Number two obstacle is the lack of support and acceptance from many members of the clergy and the religious regarding the ministry of healing, especially if the healing ministry is being run by lay people. Yeah, it's a sad fact, but it's true that there is a lack of support from the members of the clergy, from the priests. It's sad to say, you know, I am, I experienced that. They, they, they are, most of the priests, they said, no, no, that's a, an area that I don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. No way. I don't want to touch that. Uh, you know, sad to say, there is a lack of knowledge that exists, not only among lay people, but among the clergy, lack of knowledge. And they are, they are so uh, sad to say, ignorant of the gifts of, of the power of the Lord to heal. And they have, they, they also, maybe part of it also, maybe it's jealousy, could be a part of it. Like uh, the priest, the, the clergy is jealous of lay people who have this kind of ministry and maybe lack of understanding also of the healing ministry. That's why we have the, we have, uh, the lack of support on, uh, from, the, from the clergy, but it doesn't discourage, it, it doesn't discourage me from exercising my gift because it's a mission that the Holy Spirit has given, has given me, has given us as baptized believers we are we are we have to go out there and go out to the world and exercise the gifts that the lord has has given us so we should not be discouraged just because we don't have the full support of the clergy and other religious people amen amen yeah amen the rooster said amen. Uh, the rooster even agreed. Yes. And also another obstacle is that many consider the healing ministry as spooky or some kind of superstitious belief. That's what I said, lack of knowledge, lack of, of understanding, uh, ignorance, 
but uh, Jesus healed the sick. He's, you know, if you read the, the, the gospel, you will find out that over 70% of Jesus' works on earth while he was still walking on the face of the earth, over 70% of his ministry were spent on healing the sick. That's, that was his main ministry, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to, to proclaim the gospel. And you know the reason why? The reason why is because this is Jesus is fighting Satan. So his healing ministry shows that the kingdom of God is present. It's a clear sign that the kingdom of God is here and now. Jesus says that if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then it shows that the kingdom of God is here and now. So every time we see the sick being healed, the like, like the blind able to see, the deaf able to hear, the lame able to walk, people possessed by evil spirits were set free, then, then we can say that the kingdom of God is present. The kingdom of God is alive. The kingdom of God is here and now. Amen? Amen. And, amen. And, amen. Everybody on mute, say amen. Yes, and, amen. and the fourth uh, obstacle is that many in the healing ministry also think that they are superstar. They are superstar Christians. <laughs> and therefore, they should be treated as special people. No, people in the yes, healing thanks. ministry, people in the healing ministry are servants of God. We are, we are just instruments for the healing power of God. We are not the healer. We should remember always that Jesus is the healer. We are not the healer. I am not a healer. Anybody is not a healer, but the Lord uses people to heal people. All we have to do is to, is to pray for healing and leave the results to the Lord. You know, when one time when I was in, in, the, uh, in the Holy Land, in uh, Bethlehem, we conducted a healing service in Miriam Church in Bethlehem. And many Arab Christians, mostly women came. Um, many, uh, many people there came. Uh, it was, uh, uh, the church was packed, Miriam Church. Miriam Church is about three blocks away from the Church of Nat Nativity in Bethlehem. Now, when they witnessed this one blind man who was 58 years old, he was able to see after being blind for 50, 58 years old, but for 58 years, he, the, the women came up to me running, you know, and they, they uh, took my hands and put my hands wherever they wanted my hands to be on, to be on them. You know, some, you know, it's very, I was very scared <laughs> because, because they put my hands on sensitive areas of their bodies. <laughs> sensitive areas in their bodies. They, and didn't mind, didn't care. You know, so I was scared because there, there are people there who had cameras. Now, if, if, the, if they took my pictures and my hands on, were on, the, on their sensitive areas of the body, they might say, why, why is Bob touching the, you know, the sensitive areas of the women's body? That they, I'll be in big trouble, right? So, so I told the priest there, Father Yaakov, I said, Father, I better not, I better not uh, go um, proceed with the healing service. I better leave if you don't tell them to stay where they are, to, to stay on their chair. Do not come and, 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 you know, fight for my hands. I said, I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. This is, I, I don't want to touch uh, 
sensitive areas of a man's of a woman's body. No, that that is dangerous. Supposing they would they would have pictures taken and they would say, "Oh, Bob is touching this of a woman, that of the woman's body." So what will happen to me? I will be have I will be accused of things that I didn't do, and I will not do ever. I will not do it. So the priest told us, our, um, our women, uh, Arab women, said, please stay put. Do not leave your chair. You know, Bob will lay hands on you one by one, but it should be in order. Okay? So, but the thing is, sad to say, there are many people in the healing ministry, they thought that since they are used by the Lord, to heal people that they are already somebody special. No, no, it's, that's not supposed to be. And they, uh, they expect to be treated as special people. Of course, everybody is special in the eyes of God. But if you are in the healing ministry, you are supposed to be the servant, the servants among the God's servants. We are supposed to be servants. We are not superstars, but we are servants. Jesus says, he who humbles himself shall be exalted, and he who, who exalts himself shall be humble. Number five, lack of knowledge and fam familiarity of the healing and redeeming power of Jesus to the healing and restoration of, uh, of the whole person. So some people in the healing ministry, they don't have, they lack knowledge of the redeeming power of Jesus. So they just want to see physical healing mostly. Uh, but the thing is, the Lord healed people to heal them, mostly spiritually. You know, spiritual healing is, is, is the most important thing. We should receive spiritual healing. What do you mean by spiritual healing? Healing of our relationship with the Lord. That is a spiritual healing. Healing of our relationship with the Lord. That's the most important healing. Now, I'm not saying physical healing is not important. I'm not saying psychological healing nor emotional healing is important. But the thing is, the most important healing is conversion of heart, healing of our relationship with the Lord. That should be, that should be our goal, to be become more like Jesus in every way, to act more like Jesus, to speak more like Jesus, to have compassion like Jesus had compassion. That should be the most important healing. Number five is lack of Number five, are we on number five, uh, Jerry? You just go back. Oh, you're on number six. You're on number six. We are number six now. Okay. Many focus more on the healing rather than the the healer himself, who is Jesus Christ. Yes, that's true. You know, we we forget sometimes that we are not the healer, that Jesus Christ is the healer himself. We should, we should focus our eyes and heart and mind on the Lord because he's the healer. Do not say, oh, some people say, oh, I heal this, I, I heal my friend. I lay hands on him, on him or her, I heal them. No, you're not, you're not the one who, who healed him. It's Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we should focus our heart, our mind on the Lord Jesus. Give credit where well, credit is due. And Jesus is the healer. He is the master healer. He's our Lord and Savior. Number seven. Many in the healing ministry sometimes pay more attention on the technique, techniques of healing the sick rather than on the promptings and leadings of the Holy Spirit. So 
some people in the healing ministry, I have noticed, because we conduct mass and healing services every month, ever since 1989. So many in the healing ministry sometimes pay more attention on the techniques or what should I say when this uh, person is, is has a problem with this, with that, or oh, what shall I pray? No, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit be the leader and obey him, obey the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes there are times, I have experienced that there are times when you, when you are thinking of something and then if you listen to the Holy Spirit and he leads you to another area where, where the, the healing is most needed. For instance, someone will say, oh, Bob, if someone will say to me, Bob, I have this fear and anxiety in my heart, in my mind. I'm always fearful. And then when, when I pray, I said, Lord, as I'm praying, I'm also listening to the Lord. My heart, the eyes of my heart are focused on, on the Lord's mouth, on the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is leading me. And sometimes the Lord will say, okay, uh, break curses, break curses that were spoken against him or against her, break the curse. So I will proceed with breaking the curses. I have to obey, I have to obey what the, the leadings of the Holy Spirit because in the book of first first Samuel chapter uh, uh, first Samuel uh, 55 it says uh, obedience is better than sacrifice so I obey I I obey the Holy Spirit I will not stick to my way of thinking or, or my preconceived ideas when I pray for the sick I open myself up to the leadings and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes uh, somebody will say to me, Bob, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, I'm sick of this. I, I have a sickness here, uh, heart palpitation, for instance, you know, please pray for my heart because I have heart palpitation. I, I always, you know, I, it, it occurs to me many times during the day. So when I lay hands on, on that person, I said, Lord, that's, that's this person. Feel him or her with the, your power. And then the Lord will say to me, my son, I want you to uh, do an inner healing to this person because he's wounded. He's wounded psychologically or he's wounded mentally or physically he was he was or she was abused as a child she was abused as a child as a result you no know, problems like this occurred to to him or to her so i will ask then i will ask this person okay has, have you been abused, sexually abused in your youth? And they would say, yeah, yes, yes. So, but at first, he, at first this person would not tell me that he or she was abused sexually or abused mentally through the leadings and through the urgings of the Holy Spirit. And then I will then I know how to proceed, how to pray for that person. So it is important, sisters and brothers, if you are praying for the sick, if you are called to the healing ministry, that you need to, um, to obey the promptings, the leadings of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He is, he is our uh, advocate. He is the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit. So abide in him so that you will know 
and you will see what the real problem of the sick of the sick may be. Okay, many in the healing ministry sometimes pay more attention. Yeah. Okay. So number eight, you were done with that. Number eight. In a large healing service or Zoom meeting, sometimes it is difficult to minister to each person individually. So I think that's my picture there um, with a lot of people around me, thousands of people there in Malaysia. I think that's the picture of me there in Malaysia I was conducting a workshop on healing. So many times in, a, you know, there were thousands of people like when I conducted a healing service in Aranita Coliseum in Manila, there were 12,000 people. In South Korea, there were about 13, 12 to 13,000 people. In Indonesia, there are thousands of people. So it's hard to, to pray individually. So what I do, I'll just pray a, a, a general prayer for healing. So I would say, those of you who have eye problems, put your hands on your eyes. Those of you who have heart problem, put your hands on your, on your chest. Or those of you who have back problem, put your hands on your back, you know? And then I said, those of you who have all these kind of problems, like heart problem, eye problem, or any other problems, put your hands on your forehead, okay? So that's what I usually do and then pray a general prayer for healing because it's impossible to pray over, in, uh, over people individually. I would like to do that. That would be the best thing to do. But most of the times, even when I went to, to uh, Sweden and Denmark and um, Finland you know, and, and Europe, it's hard to, to pray with thousands of people there, you know, wanting you to touch them individually, it's impossible. But I will tell them, you know what? God is sovereign. I don't even have to touch you in order for you to be healed. One time I was doing, I was conducting a healing service in Singapore. And I was, as I was preaching the word, I was teaching uh, in front of uh, maybe 2,000 people there in Toyapayu, Toyapayu in Singapore, uh, Church of the Risen Christ, there was this boy, there was this boy walking around, around me on the altar. He was running around there, around the altar, walking and very, very loud. He was, you know, maybe his, his legs were like, you have shoes made of steel, maybe. I was annoyed at first. I was annoyed because I said, finally, I said, would the parents please get this boy from the altar? Because this boy was running around. He was disturbing people inside the church. So later on, this, this lady came up to me while I was on the podium and she whispered, into my ears, he said, Bob, my son had been paralyzed since birth. She had, she had um, uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, no, uh, no, not multiple sclerosis, but um, cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, Bob. He had been on the wheelchair for, since birth. And then after you started your preaching and teaching, he suddenly came out from his wheelchair and started walking. And that's why he came up on the altar, started walking around there. He said, I could, you know, I didn't have uh, a courage to stop him because it, this is his first time. The first time I've seen him walk. And so I felt kind of uh, guilty about it because I was annoyed. I didn't know though. And I said, praise God. Can you imagine? I said, the Lord 
healed this little boy. He must be about six, maybe five or six years old. And walking around, running around, praise God. So the, the Lord is sovereign. I said, I didn't even have a chance to lay hands on him, to pray for him. The Lord, the Lord healed him through, my, through the preachings of the words. So the word of God says, I sent my words and healed their diseases. Can you imagine? The Lord used not my hands, but my words, even though I, I, I was not aware of the condition of this young boy, but he used, he used, he had used my words to heal him. That is some, something, that's amazing, amen? Amen, everyone unmute and say amen, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 Okay, amen. number nine. Amen. 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 Number nine. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, number nine, some in the healing ministry are more concerned for personal gratifications, such as getting monetary gain, and some are more uh, engrossed in obtaining a repetition of being, quote unquote, a popular healer, rather than giving glory to the Lord. It's a big mistake of the people in the healing ministry. Now the uh, many, sad to say, many in the healing ministry are just focused on how to make money. Now that should not be the case. That should that be the case you know remember what the lord says seek first the kingdom of god and everything else will come besides seek first the kingdom of god you no know, when when you are called to this ministry it's not for you to to get rich it's not for you to get rich but what a, but this is a privilege it's an honor for someone in the healing ministry to, to pray for your brother or sister who has been suffering. It's a big privilege to be used of the Lord to heal someone who has been suffering for a long time. In my case, thank God, it is through the grace of God that, that I, I feel so privileged to be able to, to touch a human being like me and if someone will tell me, Bob, because of what you said, because of what you did to me, you know, my life has become more bearable, more bearable, more livable because of what you did, because of what you said to me. For me, that, that is a very, very important privilege, Amen. very important Amen. honor. And I am humbled by the Amen. fact that the Lord has used me to set you free from suffering, from all of these uh, infirmities. No, nobody, I know, not everybody has that kind of privilege. N not everybody has that kind of honor that the Lord has given you to ease up the pain of your brother or sister. For me, I said, Lord, I am not worthy, but Lord, I am thankful to you that in spite of myself, you use me. You use me to, to ease the pain of my brothers and sisters, to make their lives more livable, to make, uh, to make their lives more bearable. What an honor. So that should not be our main focus about monetary gain. You know, the Lord provides. The Lord provides. When, when somebody would call me, like, like someone sent me an email last week, Bob, can you come to Poland? Uh, we would like for you to conduct a healing service and give a teachings on healing in Glowis, Glowis, as Glowis or Glowis, Poland. And you are recommended to come and please come on May, something May, 18 of 2022, uh, we would like for you, there's a big convention here in Poland. So I prayed about it and I, I, I told him, um, I sent an email to him that sure, I prayed about it and yes, and 
and barring any resurgence of COVID-19, God willing, I'll be there. But then I said also, I, when I travel, usually when I travel, especially out of the country, I always have a companion for me, with me. I always have a companion with me. And especially when I travel out of the country, I said, would you be willing to pay for this person's airfare and, and also his meals and his hotel stay? And then he said, yes, we are willing to do that. So, and he asked me, how much would, how much stipend would you be willing to receive? I said, it's up to you. It's, it's up to your discernment. I leave it up to you. I don't have any set amount. As long as I am able to, to, to glorify the Lord, that's more than enough for me. So sisters and brothers, this is not for us to be rich. You know, as I know that there are people in the healing ministry that they are millionaires many times over. And, and every time they have a healing crusade or healing rally, they always talk about money. Now, many of you are, who, are, who have been to my healing crusades, healing ministry, I believe you never heard me talk about money. Never, because that's not my, my main concern. No, uh, our main concern in the healing ministry is to give glory to the Lord and to ease up the pain and suffering of our sisters and brothers. Amen. To express our love by our prayers for them. Amen, amen. That is for me, that is a biggest expression of love. When you, when you care and you pray for your sisters or brothers that have been suffering. Amen? Amen. Number 10? Unmute and say amen. Amen, Bob. Amen. 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 Brother. Amen. Okay, so nobody, amen. now you have invited, some of you have invited me to the healing crusade in your country or in your city. You never did hear me mention money, right? Amen? Yeah, amen. Amen, amen. yes. Amen. Okay, so many, number 10, many in the healing ministry lack this, this direction from church authorities. And as a result, they don't have any accountability, you know, accountability to the church. You know, in my case, in my case, I have, um, I have a spiritual director. I have a spiritual director and I'm account, accountable. I'm, I'm accountable to my parish priest. I'm accountable to my prayer group. I'm accountable to the bishops of my diocese. As a matter of fact, I always report to my bishop uh, twice a year, at least twice a year. You know, I, I report to my bishop about the prayer group, about my healing ministry, and to the parish priest, you know, uh, yeah. I talk to him. So I have to make myself accountable, accountable to the church. And I ask my uh, bishop, bishop, if you, if you have something to, to tell me or to inform me, I am always ready, you know my phone number. If you heard some, something that you don't like on the way we conduct our mass and healing service at St. Luke's Paris, you can always call me and tell me uh, or give me an advice. I'm open to it. So I always make myself accountable to the bishop and to the parish priest. I'm accountable. So we have to make ourselves accountable to the church authorities, especially. We have to be obedient to the church authorities direction. You know, because, you know, Jesus is accountable. He made himself accountable to the father. So the best way is to make ourselves accountable to our 
to our superiors, to, our, to the church authorities. Amen? Amen. Number 11. Everybody unmute. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Number 11. Amen. There is a tendency in some healing ministers to give counseling to the sick, even in areas that they don't have any uh, expertise, such as psychological or emotional in nature, which require a medical doctor or a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, psychiatrist, or a trained professional to handle. Like during our healing service, there are many times, you know, I, I wonder, I said, why are these people, you know, they, are, they, were, they were praying over a person and then uh, it took them like half an hour, at least half an hour for just person that they prayed, there were four of them, or most of the time, two of them, and it took them 30 minutes or even longer. And then I said, I better listen to what they were saying. You know what? I found out that they were counseling, you know, counseling the sick. I said, you know what? You may use your word of knowledge. You may use your, your, um, uh, the, uh, the, the word of knowledge, especially, word of wisdom. But then I found out that they said, no counseling, because you are not a professional. You are not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. You know, so, so I, I called a meeting to all our healing teams, and I told them, I've noticed that it takes many people, many, many of the healing teams, to pray one or two people, talk them more than, you know, over like almost an hour. And he said, you know why? Because you are counseling. You're not qualified to counsel people because unless you are a professional psychiatrist or you have, you have a, a degree in psychiatry or degree in psychology, you are not supposed to give counseling. No counseling. So since that time, you know, it was finished right away. It, it doesn't took uh, a lot of time to, to finish the mass and healing service because at St. Luke's, there are many people who always come to our mass and healing services. Sometimes 150 people, sometimes 200 people, it depends, you know? So we should not be counseling people. We just pray. We just pray. Praying is different from counseling or from, you know, giving so many advice. But if you are, you are free to give your word of knowledge, word of wisdom, but not counseling. Amen? Amen. Okay, now. Amen. Uh, amen. Number 12. Amen, everybody. Amen. Unmute, say amen. 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 Okay. Number 12. Some healing ministers fail to emphasize the importance of the church's sacraments, such as the sacrament of reconciliation and the Eucharist and the anointing of the sick as sources of healing. They are, I, in, in my case, in my experience, when I pray over people who are, especially who have debilitating illnesses, some are like you have cancer or uh, debilitating illnesses, I always advise them to, uh, to, you know, go to confession because go to, you know, ask the priest to give you the sacrament of, of reconciliation and the sacrament of the sick. The anointing of the sick, because the anointing of the sick is a sacrament that uh, is a sacrament for healing. It it doesn't mean that the last rite. Some we used to call it as the last rite, uh, like when when somebody is almost ready to die. No, the anointing of the sick 
is a, is a sacrament for healing. So, the, so that's why it's called the anointing of the sick. It's very important. You emphasize that on those people who have the debilitating illnesses and sick and sicknesses and in a grave danger, okay, of dying. And also the sacrament of reconciliation or contrition. You know, we should always, as I emphasize, we should go to contrition at least once a month, at least once a month. And of course, during COVID time, when the when the COVID last year, uh, there was there were uh, COVID nineteen uh, prevalence throughout the world. Of course, uh, churches were closed. It was hard, but now no more excuses because the church are open now, and you can even call a priest in your parish to schedule for a reconciliation. Go to confession at least once a month. Of course, the church says, you know, it's appropriate to just have, have once a year, go to confession. But in my case, I said, I recommend once a month, okay? And of course, after confession, we should go to mass and receive the Eucharist because the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Jesus are the sources of healing. They are the main sources of healing, the body and the blood of Jesus. Thank you, so Mark. when I receive uh, communion, when I receive the body and the blood of Jesus, I, I always pray, I always pray and speak to the Lord, you know, for at least two to three minutes. I will say to the Lord, Lord, you are now inside my body. You know what's inside my body. You know any the organs that are not functioning Normally, you, you know, Lord, the composition of my body and you know which uh, organ is about to fail. You know everything, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to fortify my body with your precious body and blood. Fortify all my cells, all my tissues, all my organs, all my nerves, my muscles, my arteries, my bones, my joints. Take away any infection from my body by the power of your blood, by the power of your Holy Spirit. I always talk to the Lord. And then I have, I have a postscript also, postscript. It's PS, postscript. I would say, Lord, please make me look younger than my <laughs> actual age, okay? Please, Lord, make me look younger than my actual age. That's why I am now, you know how old am, am I now? A hundred? Hundred and two. Well, you look amazing, Bob. <laughs> yeah. You look amazing. I'm hundred and two. But, but look at me. I, I didn't look like hundred and two, right? Not at all. You look oh. very young. Yes. A man and a man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number 13. I think this is the last one, number 13, okay? Many in the healing ministry easily get discouraged and lost their faith when they don't witness or experience instant healing. Okay, instant healings right away. Many healings are in installment basis, and sometimes they occur in areas that are not expected to occur. So may, yes, many healings, I would say about 80% of the healings are on installment basis. Now Jesus, Jesus had experienced that. Remember when he prayed over a blind person, he laid hands on this blind person, he, he, he took this person away first and then he laid hands on him. And then, and then the Lord said, okay, can you, how about now? Can you see? He said, I, like, I see people walking like sticks, right? They look like trees. L looking like trees. Mark eight, uh, I think. Or sticks, or sticks. You know, they, they, they look like trees, they look like sticks. So, so in other words, what, what did Jesus do? He laid hands on him again. 
And then after that, then the person was able to see clearly. So even the Lord had experience of praying over twice a person. So, so we should expect uh, that the same thing would also happen to us. Sometimes, like one time, uh, I was helping a, a priest in the Stockton Diocese. <clears throat> I was helping him to, to um, exercise. It's a formal exorcism. Exercise a young girl, I think eight-year-old girl. It took us over a year be before this girl was totally freed of the evil spirits. Over a year, sisters and brothers. Of course, there are there were occasions that I prayed for deliverance, and the, the person uh, is uh, set free by the Lord in a few minutes. But this time, when I helped this priest, they, the official exorcist in our parish, when I helped him, he asked me to help him do exorcism. It took us over a year before this girl was finally delivered, totally delivered from the wow. evil spirit. It was, it was a horrible experience. I've, I've seen something that I've not imagine before. <coughs> Excuse me. There is no glamour. There is no glamour in, in doing exorcism, formal exorcism. You know, you have to fast and you have to pray. But sisters and brothers, you no, know, we should not be discouraged if you don't see results right, right away. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes you pray for one area and then another area of a person's life was being healed. So the Lord is sovereign. The Lord is sovereign. Just say, Lord, I know that everything will work for the good for those who love you and are called according to your purposes. The book of Romans chapter eight, verse 28. Somebody asked me before, Bob, why, why I, am I suffering? I don't deserve to suffer. I did not commit uh, a big sin, a serious sin. How come I am suffering? And Bob, I know people who committed horrible sins, but they are not suffering. How come I am suffering? And the answer to that is this. The Lord is sovereign, I don't know, but uh, we should remember that he will do what is best for us. The book of Romans 8, verse 28 says, uh, everything will work for the good for those who are called by the Lord, who are called to his purposes. And, you know, according to his purposes. So everything will work for the good. So we, that's our main focus, that whatever happened to us, that works for the good. It could be for redemptive suffering. It could be for the reason of the redemptive suffering that maybe you undergo this redemptive suffering, not for you, but maybe for somebody else's, you know, for somebody else's behalf. But if you are called to undergo this redemptive suffering, the Lord will also provide you uh, uh, an escape that you will not suffer in a horrible way while you are being chosen to undergo this, this uh, redemptive suffering. And maybe this is, this is for your own redemption also. We don't know. Maybe, maybe this is for the redemption you are suffering and the Lord is used this for the redemption of your uh, relative soul or for the, for the conversion of sinners among your friends, maybe. So 
you know, everything will work for the good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purposes. So if you are suffering right now, you know, ask the Lord, Lord, strengthen me. Because the Lord has a purpose for that. The Lord has great purposes. Do not say, do not say, Lord, you know, I blame you. And some people even go to the extent of blaming God. Oh, Lord, you know, you are so cruel. I don't have, I, I didn't do no wrong, but I'm suffering. And some even had uh, uh, left the church or had lost their faith in the Lord because of that. But we should look beyond. You should look beyond that. We should have the faith that it's for something good, something good that is about to happen. Maybe, maybe you, you are undergoing a redemptive suffering, maybe for your wife or for your husband. No, maybe your husband was in the, is in danger of losing his life or losing his uh, eternal life with the Lord. Maybe your husband uh, is about to die and you don't, of course you don't know about this. And then if, when he dies, then he, he goes to eternal torment. He, he goes to eternal fire. But because of your suffering, maybe the Lord uses this to save your husband's soul. Maybe for the conversion of his heart or his mind. So he's sovereign. And remember, he's a loving God. He loves us with an everlasting love. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's with us. He loves us more than we could ever, ever, ever love ourselves. Amen. Amen. So sisters and brothers, you know, there are many reasons why we are suffering. And there are many reasons why, you know, uh, we should not be discouraged that, uh, that if we don't witness uh, or experience instant healings. You know, maybe, maybe that, that person needs to come to the Lord first. Maybe that, that person needs to repent first before he gets healed. So we should not, you know, if you pray over a, a person and that person doesn't get healed, do not say, oh, better forget it. I, I better not do it again. Amen. Person said, Bob, how come every person that I prayed over, that person died? So they even called me as uh, was a Mister. What what did he what did he call him? Um, uh, Mr. Death or something, Mr. Death or something like that. Because every every person that I laid hands on, they die. I said, maybe that that is already their time to die. Because die, because death is a perfect healing. Death is a perfect healing. So don't be discouraged when you pray over somebody and that person you 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 spend your entire heart your 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 all your strength to pray for that person and that person uh, dies anyway so you said oh you I, I better not pray again don't say that because maybe that was the lord's intention that that person because of your prayers that person probably came to the Lord, probably repented of his sins or her sins. And that's the, that's the, that's the most important healing. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, so, so uh, I think that's the last one. Can we, can we get the, the next uh, frame? Uh, Jerry? Oh, okay, this. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. That's uh that's the ministry. Okay, that's me in Singapore. You know, uh somebody told me, Bob, there's a silhouette behind you. You know, behind you, it looks like the Pieta, like Mother Mary, Mother Mary holding uh, the body of Jesus, the Pieta. And somebody says it's a light, Bob, you know, in uh, but actually there's no there's no light or there's no, nothing like that on the wall when this picture was taken. So I would say that's probably a sign that the Lord gave me to always pray for the sick. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bob. Yeah, this took place. That picture was Amen. taken in uh, Singapore. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. That was as me. Whiter than the snow, than the snow. My Jesus, God's living sacrifice. Again. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice and washes me. Whiter than the snow, than the snow, my Jesus, that living sacrifice. My Jesus, that living sacrifice and you we praise the lord we glorify your name Praise to the name of God. Praise the name of God. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We love you. 
Somebody had pain around the neck area, uh, had pain around the neck area. When you woke up this morning, you, you had pain on your neck area, around your neck area, and also pain under your uh, shoulder blade, and the pain is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. The Lord is the healer. As we go, as we go along, more healings, Thanks, more God. healings are going yeah. to occur. Because as I said, Jesus is, is with us right now. Amen. He's with us right now. The same Jesus Amen. who died on the cross in Calvary, and the same Jesus who resurrected from the dead is with us right now. Amen. So you, more healings, yeah. more healings are coming forth. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Son of God, only you can save me. Suffering on the cross, Savior, willingly pay the cost for me. Now I am free to worship Jesus. You are my healer, oh Jesus. Touch me and I will be free. Lord, by your stripes I am healed. I am healed. Jesus, you are my Savior, oh Jesus. You are my strength and my shield. I put my trust in your name. In your name, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Lord, your name is great. Our refuge I can run to a shelter from the storm. So friend, depend on my good Lift my voice to worship Jesus. You are my Jesus, touch me and I will be healed. Lord, by your stripes I am healed. I am healed. Jesus, you are my Savior, oh Jesus. You are my strength and my shield. I put my trust in your name. Your name, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, say the name, oh Jesus, trust the name, Jesus, there's healing in the name of Jesus. Say the name, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Amen. 
Thank you, Jenny. Wonder, wo wonder Woman. Awesome song. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Great song. Thank you.